it's so good to serve the Lord. When we're talking about serving God. We always include coming to church. That's just a small part of serving the Lord. Uh, to serve God, we just serve Him while we sit in church, Brother David. It'd be a very short time, Brother David. You know, three times a week. If our services last three hours, it's only nine hours. And they don't usually last three hours each time. Some's longer, some shorter. But our servitude of the Lord is every day. Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday when we don't even have church. Friday when we don't have church. Uh, occasionally we get a chance to visit somebody here. During this pandemic, we have been able to visit a whole bunch of and have this. But our faith is based on facts. Amen. I love feelings. I love to feel good. I like to speak in tongues. I like to feel the Holy Ghost stir in my heart. I love to cry before the Lord, to laugh before the Lord. I love to hear my brothers and my sisters testify. But when it comes right down to serving God, it's your individual faith. Amen. What you believe about God. And uh, it goes far beyond just singing and clapping your hands. That's part of it. Saved by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. The very life that we live. So we're, we're seeking eternal life. When I found God, I was wanting to go to heaven. I heard about heaven since I was just a little boy, Mama. People would talk about heaven, Grandma and Grandpa, Mouser and Grandma Walton talk about heaven. And uh, I heard about the Christmas and Jesus coming and the miraculous birth and being born late in Bethlehem and manger there. And we'd hear about Easter, Ed, and when Jesus died on the cross and and he was beat and tortured for, for me, for you. And then how he rose again the third day. Well, I heard those things and I believed them. Amen. But to have hadn't been told when I found him. That's right. Found him for myself. And salvation. First off, I was saved. And uh, had my name written down in heaven. There's a scripture that says Jesus sent them out two by two. And they came back rejoicing. Brother David, he said, the, the devils are subject to us. He said, don't rejoice that the devils are subject to you, but rather rejoice, the most important thing, mm -hmm. that your name is written in heaven. Uh -huh. That was people that were saved. So my name was written in heaven and it was several months later before I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. There was evidence. There was a good feeling that came, but there was an evidence that's biblical. Um, I spoke in a language to God, between me and God. And it wasn't English. It wasn't French or German or... I, you know, I don't speak French or German, but I can pick up on a dialect if I hear a Frenchman talk, and I know that must be some from France because they got a certain twang to their voice. <coughs> Whatever it was, I didn't know what it was, but God did. And I found evidence in the scriptures and on the day of Pentecost. Found evidence uh, on the, in the apostles as they preached the gospel and Peter preached to the household of Cornelius and they received it with the evidence of speaking in tongues and how uh, Paul preached on the, to the ones on the road to Emmaus and they received it with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And outward manifestation of an inward glory. <clears throat> what would have happened to me if I would have died during those few months period there, when I, when I was saved and then uh, got the Holy Ghost later, 
Well, some people said, well, you'd have just died and went to hell and burned and cried throughout eternity. Because you got to receive the Holy Ghost. And other people said, well, you just wouldn't have went nowhere. You would just died and have been hit. But uh, my understanding is, someone asked the question, do you have to receive the Holy Ghost to resurrect? No, but you do have to be saved. And you got to stay saved. Your name has to be written in heaven and not blotted out. You got to know God. Have the blood of the Lamb of Jesus applied to your heart. The blood of Jesus was applied to my heart in salvation. It didn't take the Holy Ghost baptism to do that. I got that first, Brother David. But resurrection, some people equate resurrection with eternal life. All I got to do is resurrect and I'm going to live in heaven forever. Well, that would be good if that was the case, but that's not biblical. It's not, our faith is based on facts. Said, of those that didn't obtain to the first resurrection, said the rest, uh, the, 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 the blessed holy is he that had part in the first resurrection on such a second death has no power. But the rest of the dead live not again till the thousand years were finished. That's people that their, their race wasn't finished. For you to get eternal life, you have to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You can't get the Holy Ghost until you're saved. You don't get the Holy Ghost and later on get saved. You get saved, water baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Now you might get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and then water baptized, but there's you, you have to have both of them. Ted, to have your name written in the book of life and eventually in the Lamb's book of life. I thank God that, to, that he give us instruction, Christ give us instruction about receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In John, the third chapter, and this is one of the most precious chapters in the Bible. I, and I love John 3. It was Christ preaching a message to one man for all the world to hear. <laughs> Isn't that strange? He was preaching a message to one man for all the world to hear. So how do I make you think that? Because of John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. One of the most well-known scriptures out of the New Testament that's gone worldwide preached to one man. And there were some others there very evident because of them recording the the uh, conversation that uh, Nicodemus had and the message that Jesus preached. But Jesus said, you must be born again. No, maybe, should be, could be, be a good idea too. He said, you must be. That's a fact. To get eternal life, there are some people Say, well, unless you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the evidence of speaking in tongues, you, you cannot resurrect. Well, what I see in the Word of God and what my elders taught me is that true salvation writes your name down in heaven. Someone said, well, when you resurrect, what happens to you? You've got to be born again. After you resurrect, you'll have to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, and you'll have to receive fire baptism and finish your race. Nobody gets eternal life except they understand and go through the doctrines of baptism. And so Jesus, he, in this chapter, he, 
he said such important things. Important to me, important to you. Things that we need to know and we need to understand and have as, as a facts for us as anchors for our soul for the day that we live in. There was a man of the Pharisees. Okay, this was a Jewish man. The Pharisee sect was they, uh, they held to the Mosaic Covenant, the law of Moses. They were very devout people. His name was Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews. Nicodemus is important. I'm glad they put his name down. I'm glad he didn't just say there was a man. Nicodemus, we read about him through the scriptures. This message helped convert this man. When Jesus died, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea went and begged for the body of Christ. And got the body of Christ, wrapped it in uh, grave clothes and laid it in Joseph of Arimathea's tomb. He was a rich man. <coughs> and it, they had a rich man and they had an influential ruler that had enough clout uh, uh, with Rome to get the body of Jesus. He was a ruler. He was of the Sanhedrin. I always say, for you to understand that, it's similar to a Supreme Court justice. And that's a very high office in our day, and this is a high office in their day. The same came to Jesus by night. He was apparently afraid. He wasn't afraid of Jesus, that Jesus would hurt him, but he was afraid that those men that he were a part of would hurt him. He was afraid of it. It's a shame when people serve God and they're afraid of others. Afraid others is going to hurt them, disfellowship them, throw them away, kill them, excommunicate them. Because they're seeking God. And he was seeking God. But he come by night. He was afraid. Said we know. And here. He's uh, referring to other rulers. Other Pharisees. We know that thou art a teacher. <clears throat> Said come from God. Well Jesus was definitely a teacher. He was well, not so much more than a teacher. He's an apostle and prophet. And a great high priest. He was the Savior. He was the Son of God. He was the Son of David. He was the bright morning star. He was the life giver. He said, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. They knew where he come from. They didn't know how he got there. But they knew God. God had sent him. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. And the miracles that Jesus was doing was getting attention of the ruling class, of the Pharisees, of the Sadducees, and of the common fishermen and tax collectors and all the things that was going on. Some of them loved him, some of them hated him. This man recognized that he was a man come from God. Except God be with him. And he knew that God was with Jesus. Jesus answered and said unto him. Now he didn't, even, he didn't ask the question. He's not asking the question. He made some statement. That we know that you're a teacher and we know that you come from God and you're a man of God. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except that a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Have you ever had God answer a question before you ask it? <laughs> well, I have. And if you've been around very long, you have. You may have been sitting in a service and wondering, well, I wonder what that means. Or you may have been asking the Lord about it or even thinking about it before you come to church. And lo and behold, the Lord answered your question here in church. God knows what you, what's in the heart of man. He has no need that somebody tell him. He knows what they're. He knows the very thoughts 
and the intents of the heart. He knew the thoughts and the intent. And Joseph of Arimathea had a good intent. There were some that come asking Jesus questions that they may have something to accuse him of. But he wasn't coming with a, with a wrong motive. He wanted to hear what this teacher, this man of God, had that could give him something. Right. And what he was wanting to know, really, is how do you, how do I get eternal life? That's right. Do you know the secret of how to get eternal life? <coughs> Jesus said, except a man be born of water and of spirit. Well, first off, he said, you must be born again into the kingdom. Then Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Well, you've got to be born again in order to live. Jesus was answering more than one question. There's so many things that he was saying here. In order to enter the kingdom of God, and nobody lives outside the kingdom of God, everybody dies. You've got to get into the kingdom of God to live forever. The kingdom of God is the family of God. You're a child of God. You're born once, and that birth is inherited a condemnation of death. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Sin entered into this world by one man and death by sin. Jesus is telling Nicodemus, and if you're wanting to live forever, you're going to have to be born again. There has to be a new birth, a starting point. Of when your soul is made alive to God. Nicodemus couldn't understand. He said, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? That's the only birth he knew about. And he's not the only one. Out of the billions of people that live today, there's just a few that's been born again. The rest, all they know is natural birth. Natural birth, the carnal operation of a procreation and a child being born does not produce an immortality. It does not produce a soul that's immortal. It just gives you temporal life in a temporal body. Except the man be born of water, and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. We understand and know by the gospel that the water birth and the Spirit birth, there is one birth, but two separate instantaneous works of grace. One is salvation and water baptism. The other is Holy Ghost baptism, and it takes both of them to bring about the full birth. And it's to put you in the kingdom of God. Come out of her, my people. A lot of them aren't in God's kingdom. They're born and immediately they're, they said, uh, she said to the young man that without understanding, said, come in and eat of my bread. This stolen water is sweet, bread in, eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knows not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. That is not the kingdom of God. That's a kingdom of man. God's kingdom is not a place of death and hell and, and uh, uh, destruction. But it's a place of preservation and eternal life. Yes. Wisdom has built in her house. She's hewn out her seven buildings. Thank you, Jesus. What a, what a beautiful message. The great teacher of teachers gave to Nicodemus. He said, That that's born of flesh is flesh, that that's born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. 
If you ever expect to live forever, your soul must be made alive to God. You're not born with your soul alive to God. Your soul is alive in your body. But to get eternal life, the Holy Ghost, baptism, and salvation is forgiveness of past sins. But the Holy Ghost, when it's given you, it will, it will uh, kill you and comfort you while you're dying. God uses the third baptism to help burn fire baptism. John said, I baptize you with water, but he that comes after me whose shoes I'm not worthy to loose, he'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And that will burn out carnality and sin. The wages of sin is death. That's carnal. You get that when you're born carnally. But the gift of God is eternal life. Nicodemus answered and said, well, let me back up to verse 8. The wind bloweth, Jesus said, where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Men don't know where it come from. They don't know where it's going. They don't even believe in it. But I'm telling you, I know where it come from. Yes, amen. It come from the throne room. Amen. Jesus said, me and my Father will come and take our abode yes. within your heart. Yes. We know where it come from. Yes. And we know where it's going. It's going to lead us back home to God. Yes. It'll lead you and guide you. He said the Spirit of Truth will teach you, lead you and guide you. He does that with His Holy Spirit. One of the seven spirits of God, Sister Sabrina, is the spirit of counsel. The Holy Ghost will counsel you with wisdom and knowledge and understanding of how to get to God and how to stay with God. And He's given us a vehicle to do it in called the church, the kingdom, the body of Christ. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? How can this even be possible? You ever have anybody respond to you when you tell them about the Holy Ghost? They said, How can that be? I don't believe that. How can that be? How can you be born again? What would that do for you? They don't know what to do. It's like a wind blowing to them. They don't understand. They don't know what it's going to do. How can this be? Jesus answered and said, Art thou a master of Israel? See, that's who this man was. He was one of the great men of Israel in his day. Art thou a master of Israel and knoweth not these things? Verily, verily, I have said unto you, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not. How shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? There is so much more to be told. It's more than just being saved and born of the, the Holy Spirit. Some people think, what do you do after you get the Holy Ghost? They said, well, you just hang around till you die. Well, are you, you go on campaigns and get more people filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, what do they do? They just hang around till they die. There's so much more about receiving the Holy Ghost and, instead of just waiting for death to take you to heaven. Because death will not take you to heaven if that's all you do with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost works on you. It will purify you. It will perfect you. It will kill you and comfort you. I've never said that, but it's a fact, Brother David. <laughs> kill you and comfort you while you're dying. He that seeks to save his carnal life will lose eternal life. But he that will lose his carnal life for my sake, the same shall find eternal life. I added a little bit to it, but that's what it means. 
You can get eternal life, but you must be born again. There's been people that hadn't received the Holy Ghost, but they're true servants in salvation. Their name is written down. They know God. They die without it. When they come forth, they've got a birth waiting. There's some people that's received the Holy Ghost, salvation and Holy Ghost baptism, but they haven't worked on the project and got very far and overcome it. When they come forth, they're They've got a long race to run. Lord help us. We don't make the bride. When you make the bride, the race is finished. But when you don't make the bride, you've got to finish. Run as far as you can in this life. Maybe you'll finish. So your soul isn't alive unto God, though, until you get the Holy Ghost, not just being saved? Being saved, your past sins are forgiven. But the soul is not made alive, born again. It takes both operations for the birth to be complete. That's part of it, the water. And the other part's the spirit. One birth, but two operations. Until both operations are done, you're not born again. Your soul is not made alive to God. The Holy Spirit's not dwelling down on the inside. Holy men of old spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. It was moved from without. They were touched. They could feel a touch. God would touch their mind. They would speak under the unction of the Holy Ghost. But that's different than being born again and having it inside. That's right. John, when he was just a baby, they, he said, when Mary came up, the babe leaped in his womb. God touched with his Holy Spirit, Martha, not Martha, Elizabeth and John. But John, upon meeting Jesus, said, I have need to be baptized of you. He didn't have the Holy Ghost. No man had received the Holy Ghost at that point. But they had been saved. But in order to enter into the kingdom of God, only out of the kingdom of God, only out of the womb of the woman does the bride come, and the woman herself is the king. It takes water and spirit to be alive to God, for your soul to be alive to God, and then stay alive. We're seeking eternal life. We're not doing it blindly. We're not as those that beat the air. We comprehend and know and understand what God is asking. To the world, it's a wind blowing. They hear a sound, but they don't know what it means. They don't know where it comes from. They don't know where it's going. They didn't know where Jesus come from. They didn't know where he went. And they didn't know who he was. But he's revealing to us where he come from and how he got here and what he did before this world was ever created. He was with the Father as one brought up with him, rejoicing always before him, his daily delight. And his, his delight, Christ's delight, was with the sons of men after he created. But before the mountains were brought forth, he was with them. He was brought forth before the reckoning of time. He abided forever. Thank God. We know where he come from. We know where he went. He's in the, the heaven of heavens. He's entered in the third heaven. He's seated beside the Father. He said to him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also have overcome, and sit down with my Father in his throne. Woo! Thank God. Yes, yes. We know where he went. Yes. And equally important, we know what he's doing today. God, use us and help us. Help us to be obedient unto your word, okay. unto your spirit. Jesus said in the 13th verse, no man has ascended up to heaven. Now 
that, that's an important statement. People think that some went to heaven before in the Old Testament. People think today people just fly off and go to heaven. Without even knowing God, they go to heaven. They ain't mean enough to burn in hell forever, so surely they just go to heaven. Because they don't understand what hell is. They don't understand eternal judgment. But no man has sent it up unto heaven. Any was not for God took him. Some think, well, he just went right to heaven. No. He died. Any died. Death reigned from Adam unto Moses. And it reigned from Moses unto Christ because the law couldn't get life. Elijah was caught up in a whirlwind. Brother, Brother Clyde Patton said, just how high does a whirlwind go? <laughs> does a whirlwind go all the way into third heaven? If so, uh, by a spot on the space shuttle. It goes higher than a whirlwind. I remember back when the Challenger blew up and they had that uh, first woman, te she's a teacher, went up in it and astronauts and they killed all of them. And our president came on, Ed, and he, they, he said that they broke the surly bonds of earth and touched the face of God. I guess that thing thought was like the whirlwind. He broke the surly bonds of earth, flew up in a whirlwind, and touched the face of God. And stayed up there with him. That didn't want to happen. He died. He died. No man, no man has ascended up to heaven. But he that came down from heaven, Jesus letting you know where he come from. Nobody else has done that. He's the forerunner. He came down and he went back. He's leading us to the Father. He's leading us home. His home. And my Father's home. My Father's house are many mansions. If we're not so, I would have told you. He said, I'll come again and receive you to myself. And where I am there, you may be also. But he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven, he was in that paradise condition place of the overcomer, no sin in his life. He wasn't in first heaven, Brother Nam, he was in second heaven while he was here, until he ascended back. He said, Father, glorify thou me with the glory I had with thee before the world was, and that was in third heaven. Where the Father's at. Then Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. <clears throat> ah, he, he sure gave this ruler a lot to chew on. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. And this, this uh, Pharisee, this ruler of the Jews knew this story. No doubt he knew it by heart. Any Jew that had studied the the uh, old covenant would, could have quoted those verses. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Well, the, the image should have just flooded his mind, and no doubt did. A serpent was biting. The old snakes were biting, they were copper colored. They were biting God's children, the Israelites, and they were dying, and they cried for help. And God said, Moses, you put a serpent, you put a brazen serpent made out of brass that looks like that snake there on a pole. And when they hope, behold that steadfastly, they'll be healed. And that's what happened. They put that brazen serpent on the pole that he made and they looked to that and beheld it and believed in the Lord and they were healed of the serpent body. My, we can see now how Jesus was giving the antidote for the serpent body is to behold the Lamb of God upon the cross of Calvary. Woo! Thank God. There's power in the blood. 
the spilt blood of the Lamb of God as his blood ran out and soaked in the Judean hills there his life's blood ran out the life is in the blood his soul was made an offering for sin he carried within him the, the serpent nature but he, did, he kept it under and destroyed kept Satan under his feet so finally on the cross, he got total victory. No sin in his life. And we can look to him. So must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in this Son of Man that was made like a serpent but had not the serpent's nature, that carried the promise of life, if you behold him, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. This is the question this man was seeking. How can I live forever? He must be born again. He must be born of the water and the spirit. He said, how can this be? He said, I've told you. Natural things. He said, how can you receive the spiritual? He's telling the spiritual things here. The serpent on the pole, that's a spiritual thing. It, it's a, a picture. It's a historical type. It actually happened, but it's fulfilled in Christ. Him being lifted up on the cross. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. There's another answer. What happens to anybody that doesn't believe in him? They perish. Now, I know what perish means. You want to get a dictionary out and look at it? They're gone. They cease to exist. What preeminence has a man over a beast? As one dies, so dies the other. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. In order to truly believe in Him, you've got to be saved. Water baptized. And then to run the race filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'll let you enter into the kingdom of God where there's a where there's a battleground. It's a battleground, brother, not a recreation room. It's a fight, not a game. Yes. The patent said it's like a briar patch. <laughs> Yet Briar rabbits throw it in the briar patch. All the cuts and scratches. And I'm telling you, I find life. I found life in the body of Christ. I found food in the body of Christ. I found water in the body of Christ. I found fellowship with God and God's people in the body of Christ. God's ministry. But have everlasting life for God so loved the world. God so loved the world. He's not a hater. He's not, he's not a, sad, a sadistic person that wants to torture people. He said, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Notice what he, how he described it. The death of the wicked. He didn't say frying and popping. I take no pleasure in burning them throughout eternity. He said, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. There's not another one. Brother Patton said, Lord, why, why do you have two sons? We could have picked out which one we wanted to serve. He said, God talked to him very profoundly and said, keep it simple, bud. <laughs> well, I believe the Lord said it. He'll talk to you the way you can understand. Brother Patton understood him. He gave his only begotten son. There wasn't another son named Lucifer. There wasn't some other, uh, several other sons. There were angels, but there's only one archangel. There's only one son. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. There it is again. The soul that sinneth it shall die, it will perish. But have everlasting life. Everlasting life is a gift from God. 
This mortal must put on immortality. You're not born with immortality. Your soul is just as fragile as your body. It exists on the human body. When the body ceases to exist, the soul that it was born with, that, uh, it, it no longer gets a life's blood in the air that it needs and it dies with the body. But thank God we're born again. Our life doesn't depend on this blood pump and these air bellows. It depends on God. As the Father has life in Himself, so has He given the Son, His only begotten Son, to have life in Himself. And give the Son power to give life to whomsoever He will. And that comes through faith in Him. And faith is living for God, not just believing in God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. He's telling Nicodemus the secret of serving God. More than just believing. More than just going through some ritual. Some spiritual ritual. More than just reciting the law. It's being made alive to God through the birth of the Holy Spirit. And then knowing to, how to live with Him. Live for Him. Walk with Him. Fall in His steps who did no sin, neither was guile found in His mouth. For God sent not the Son into the world to condemn the world, Jesus didn't come to condemn. Why? Because it's already done. The world is condemned. Adam, from dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. And your children's going to be the same way. And their children's going to be the same way. And their children's going to be the same way. Until God sent His Son into this world, to take away condemnation of death by giving life to the soul. And an opportunity to walk with God in this world. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Do you see that? You see why Jesus came? It saved me. And it saved you. From my passion. Brother, Brother Mears. Message. I have been saved. I am being saved. And I shall eternally be saved. There's three phases of salvation. One of them. Saved from your past sins. That's all gone. So if someone said are you saved. You can look them right straight in the eye. And say yes I am. The blood of Jesus Christ remove all of my sins. I don't have to worry about them anymore. Now, if they got any understanding, you might say, I'm, I'm worried about what I sin today. I want to get out of the sinning business. I want to walk upright before God that someday I'll truly be saved. True, truly be saved. Not just from the past. But right now, right now, salvation, Brother David. He that believeth on him, let me back up, for God sent not his sin into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Some people think that's just believing is just say, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. That's believing he exists. That will make you his disciple, his servant, an obedient servant unto him. So thou doest well, the devils believe also and tremble. It's more than just believing he's the son of God. But he has to be your king and your lord and your master and your savior. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, 
Jesus doesn't have to condemn you for not believing in Him. You're already condemned. You're born in this world of condemnation. You're born to die. Born once, die once, and you're gone. But if you're born again, you're born twice, you die once. But you're to live. Your soul is to live on because of that new birth. If you follow on to know the Lord in, in uh, perfection and finish in the race, Paul said, I've finished my course, I've kept the faith. Hence, so forth, there's a crown of righteousness laid up for me that no man can take away. He that believes not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's the only thing that can take the condemnation. He's telling Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you want to live forever? The Son of Man is like that serpent. He looks like the serpent, but he's not the serpent. He brings salvation when he's lifted up, and I'm going to be lifted up. He, Christ was lifted up. Now he's telling him, you're condemned to die. But you don't have to remain condemned. You can believe in the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God, and condemnation can be lifted away. The sentence of death removed, in other words. And this is a condemnation. That light, the beautiful light of God, God's wisdom and God's knowledge in one person, manifested in Jesus. That the light is coming to the world. John said, I'm not the light, but he's the light. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Came into his own, his own received him not. But as many as did receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Came to his own, they received him not. There's a warning that John, that was written by John in the first chapter. <clears throat> Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. They were evil. They weren't striving to get. <clears throat> they believed in God, but they didn't want to be like God. A Christian is to be God-like, Christ-like. You're to be Christ-like if you're a Christian. There is to be no evil within you. Evil is darkness. He that says he loves his brother and hates him is in darkness. And how great that darkness is. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deed should be reproved. John had said, He came to his own and they didn't receive him because they loved their deeds, their evil deeds. They loved the life they lived. We sung the song, I love the life I'm living. I love the peace it's giving. I love the truth that's hidden in my heart. Well, I'm telling you, some people love the life they're living. But it is not truth. It's darkness. It's evil. But they love it. And it's not giving them peace. Moses said, I'd rather suffer the afflictions of God's children than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. That's all they're going to get. And then death comes knocking on their door. The death angel comes. And only those that have the lamb in their mouths have eaten the lamb through the night, have their shoes ready to go. The death angel passes over. The blood's been applied to their heart's door. They don't shed it underfoot. They don't crucify Christ at Christ. They don't put him to an open shame, but they believe in him, and they prove it by their very action, by their very life, by their very conversation and lifestyle.
Everyone that doeth evil hates the light. He doesn't come to the light neither, lest his deeds should be reproved or discovered in him. See that he needs to change. Some people say, I don't want to go to church, I'll have to change. Why don't you want to change? Why wouldn't a person want to change for the good, for the light? <clears throat> have love and peace and joy, long-suffering and gentleness and goodness. Because they love the life they're living. And it's just him. But I love the life we're living in the Lord. I love what he's given to us. And he that doeth truth cometh to the light. Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden. Jesus said, and I'll give you a life. On a, on a hot, dry day in that arid desert country, he said, Ho! Anybody that's thirsty. Boy, that got a lot of attention. Anybody that's thirsty, come unto me and I'll give you water to drink of. And out of your belly shall flow a river of living water. This spake he of the Holy Ghost. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Christ was not yet glorified. But when after his after he is death, burial, resurrection, and glorification, he said, I'll send you another comforter. He'll abide with you all way. That's the Holy Ghost. We have down on the inside. We feel it springing up. Thank you, God. It's a bubbling, Brother Nick Gurick said, it's a bubbling. It's a bubbling. It's a bubbling in my soul. Woo, they're singing, there's laughing. Oh, it's Jesus made me whole. Yes. Folks don't understand it, nor can I keep it quiet. It's bubbling, 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 bubbling. Bubbling day and night. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that's what he's done. Thank you, Lord. And that's what he's done for us. He that Doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. That's more than just believing in God. Your very life is made manifest that you are a servant of God. Some people believe in God but they don't serve him. But he that cometh to the light cometh to truth <clears throat> And light of the gospel. His life, his deeds, his works are manifest. That they are wrought in God. His life is, God is working in his life. Guiding his steps. The Lord guides the steps of his children. I'm telling you, what a mess. What a message. The next one was after these things. Jesus his disciples. He spoke to them. But these first uh, 21 verses was to Nicodemus. You must be born again. Well, some people say you have to. Well, I say you get to. You get to. Before Jesus came, you didn't get to. But now you get to be born again. But you have to do it. Yeah. Jesus said, he don't leave it. Some people say, well, it's okay to get the Holy Ghost. You don't have to. Well, who, are, who is a man that, that would uh, oppose Jesus and say you don't have to? Oh, my God. It, it don't, all it does for you is give you a good prayer language and make you feel good. They have no idea what the Holy Ghost is, where it comes from and where it's going and what it's doing while it's here. All they hear is just a wind blowing. A bunch of windbags preaching. Dogs barking. They're not telling the truth. They're not telling people the truth. You've got to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues after you repented of your sin. You've got to be born to, uh, uh, again. You've got to be baptized in water. And then... You begin a journey through the fire. His feet were like fine brass as they had been.
didn't burn in a furnace. His eyes were like fire. The song says, feet like brass and eyes like fire. And I heard a little voice saying, come up higher. Woo! Thank God. Do you hear him calling you to come up higher? To come closer to him? I was a young Christian. I always said I'd like to look him straight in the eye someday when I get to heaven. I want to see the color of his eyes. But before I ever get to heaven, I'll have to look into his eyes. They're like fire. It'll burn everything out of me. That's unlike him. It'll burn everything out of me that would kill me. What he's killing within you, when I said he's killing you and comforting you while you're dying, he's killing the old nature that's going to kill you unless it's killed. The serpent must be killed. Carnality must be destroyed. That's what's overcome. So I appreciate the Lord tonight. Ooh, thank God. We're built on facts. You're not going to get to heaven with a with a just a little bit of salvation. Believe in Jesus as God's son. You're okay. You're going to heaven when you die. Hearing, hearing damnable messages telling you that you're chosen of God and you can't do no wrong. You, you got it made. No. It's falling in His steps. That's right. Hearing a message, you got to sin a little bit every day. It's okay to. Who's the man that can tell you it's okay to sin? I'm telling you, it's not a man of God. He's not the, got the authority from God to say it's all right to sin when God says it's not. The wages of sin is death. It don't take every sin in the book to kill you. One sin is enough to kill you. Oh God, deliver us from sin, Lord. Yes. Deliver us, dear God. Yes. Cause us to rise up. Say, rise up, my love, my dove, my undefiled, and come away. He's calling to us to come away with Him. He said, <clears throat> Ruth said, Thy people will be my people. Thy God will be my God. And nothing but death will depart me from thee. Will part me from thee. Well, I found God's kingdom. It's a wonderful feeling when you know that you found what you've been looking for. But it's also a wonderful feeling when you know that you found what you didn't even know what to look for. I didn't know what to look for. But I found it. Thank God by the grace and mercy of God. I found the body. I found the body of Christ. I found life. Life in His Word and in His Spirit. And in fellowship. It's wonderful to have fellowship with Him. And fellowship with one another. Woo! Thank God. He shall look you die. Oh God. We love you Lord. We honor you Lord. How great you are. How good you are. It's not hard to serve God. It's a joy to serve Him. There's peace in my heart. There's joy in my soul. Just to be with Him. And with His children. How good He is. And how great He is. Keep on the journey. Keep on the battle. Don't back up. Don't quit. Don't let down. Don't let disappointments and discouragement cause your faith to wane. Let it cause you to draw nigh unto God. Yes. When you're in trouble, He's the only one that can help you. When you're sick, your soul sick, He's the only one that can heal you. When you're dying, He's the only one that can give you life. And it's right here. Right here in God's kingdom. That song is saying, right here in God's kingdom. I can make the bride. He taught me how to live. He taught me how to strive. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.